Hello, Post University Esports fan Warren for fans. Warren Jungle Guide Hammond here today, bringing you the action with ECAC week number three for Overwatch 2. We are coming off a fantastic win last week. It was a 3 0. We're currently sitting at 1 and 0 right now in the overall standings. Going up this week against Long Island Uni University, who took a loss last week. So 1 and 0 for us, 0 and 1 for them. They're going to be looking to come back, make a great game of this. And of course, your Post University Eagles look to keep this wind train rolling. Now, uh, real quick, wanted to shout out Post University as well. Big thank you for sending me this amazing jersey. It's got my name on the back. I mean, uh, get up and show it to you all later. But I can't wait to see uh, what this team has in store for us this week. Now, one big thing that we should talk about is the fact that we are on a new patch here. Uh, this uh, start, starting yesterday. So these players, they've only had like a day, day and a half in order to try and adjust to all these changes. And there have been a lot. This is one of the biggest uh, patches that we have had in Overwatch 2 yet. Just rife with changes. And one of the big ones is um, it just everybody has gotten uh, more health, right? Everybody is sitting on more health right now. In addition, every single... A uh, bullet is a uh, projectile, whatever, is going to be a little bit larger. So, a little more health for everybody, but in addition, everybody's a little bit easier to hit. So, lots of uh, thoughts and feelings about this across the entire Overwatch community. But one thing that I think that has uh, really affected... Um, uh, post university is that they uh, they feel like dive has gotten nerfed. I think that's a, just kind of a general sentiment around. So we're gonna um, anticipate we're gonna be seeing a lot of the same things that we uh, that we saw last week. So look for that rush. Look for that Ramatra, the Orisa, the Reinhardt kind of base compositions. Uh, tonight we're gonna be starting things off in Busan. They have uh, loaded into game. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and take a peek, get into the game, see where we are at, everybody. This is incredible. This uh, put me so far out across the map. <laughs> We're going to be starting in downtown Busan now. Uh, you know, I spoke just a minute ago about how Dive is uh, really not feeling so great on this patch right now. And... Um, this, if any of the, um, oh, we are not starting on that one. Okay, that was very strange. We're going to be starting instead uh, in Mecha Base. Now, this is a very Brawl Rush-centric map. We're going to have post-university eagles in the red on the right side of your screen. It's going to be Long Island University on the left. And, yeah, no surprises here so far. multi on that Ramatra. Which has looked so good for them over the past uh, past few games. Vera picking up the May this time around, so uh, we've actually got just a just about a complete mirror matchup. It's just going to be a difference of the DPS here. Stingray already taking a whole lot of damage there for the side of Long Island, and we can see now Post University looking to isolate a couple of these players. Multi kill does it beautifully with the help of a Wall from Vero. A couple of players have dropped down to the low ground now. Everybody else is joining them. That's going to give all LIU the high ground. They're just going to, I think, kind of hang out up there, regroup. Post University gets the first capture, but this is going to be a pretty, qu uh, pretty quick regroup here for Long Island University. Already we can see that they are back to full strength, but Snowy Dragon is pretty low. Another nice wall there from May. Snowy Dragon goes down. Stingray falls as well. Post University making very quick work of this, uh, this side. So sitting at about 20% right now, capture percentage, and that's a great place to be. Let's take a look at uh, the ultimate percentage. Now, Post University has won these fights so quickly and so efficiently that nobody really has anything significant in terms of ultimates. Uh, Multikel really kind of sitting at the top right now uh, with about 70%. Got a little bit of a swap coming in as well. Snowy Dragon has moved over to the Zendiata. They're hoping to maybe get a little bit more damage coming in. That is a lot of damage coming in onto Multikel. Uh, they're forced to back up just a little bit, but it's not going to be enough uh, to keep them at bay. They help Torero finish off Sphinx right there. Vero does go down. Ultimate pop now from Multi. They're just going to go with it. That Discord or providing some punishment, but not a whole lot. Not enough to flip the scales, turn the tides. Post University cruises to another fight win. I do like the adjustment, though, that we've seen coming out from FIU. Seagrace getting ready to have his... 
uh, ultimate as well. So this could be a pretty big opportunity for them. And I like this play right here. They're considering going straight to point with this ultimate, forcing the issue, forcing everybody to come down. But Sodium Level has the sound barrier as well. So that's going to be a great way to try and kind of mitigate what's going to come in here. Stingray holding on to that right now. They did switch the point immediately. Here comes that ultimate. Sodium Level with the sound barrier. Now they're going to wait and see if they can... Uh, stay in it, but Multikill doesn't, I think, get those shields, so that point has completely flipped, and the fight has been effectively won here by Long Island University, and Post University says, yeah, we're just going to back off, we're going to stymie the bleeding, we're going to make sure that we can get back in this fight as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So that was only, uh, let's see here, that was two ultimates expended for the side of Long Island, only one for Post University, so they're going to be coming in with three here. Watch for Trin Gamer to use this Death Blossom, try and get in here pretty quickly. The DPS ultimates from Vero and Torero could be devastating, though. Here comes uh, Kitsune Rush with the Visor. That's going to gun down two players almost immediately. There's that Death Blossom. It catches two. That's an equalizing factor. So it's going to be a 3v3 on point. Both are Amatras just swinging for the hills. It is going to be Multical who falls. So Long Island is going to be able to hold on to this point and keep it. That was a lot expended there from Post University. That's going to be two uh, big ultimates that they used, and it swung the fight initially, but Trin Gamer did come in with that beautiful Death Blossom to swing it back in their favor, and I don't think Post University was quite ready for it. So now looking into this fight, it's going to be Vero with the uh, Blizzard. That's going to be the determining factor here. Snowy Dragon, though, has, the co uh, has, the, uh, has their ultimate as well, so... They need to make sure Post University is that they kind of try and poke out Zenyatta, see if they can get that out of the way. Vero goes ahead and uses that Blizzard. Snowy Dragon is able to stay through it all. That's an ultimate down the drain there, but Jurera gets one. Multikel has the ultimate as well. Here comes the Blizzard, though, from Sphinx. Several people frozen on the point, 90% and counting. That's going to be a big turning of the tides right there. I like Terrero up on the high ground there, but it's not going to be enough to flip things in favor of Post University. So with that, Post University starts out strong, but Long Island University flips it in the end. Love that kind of gameplay that we saw, and it really was all on that. Uh, I think that the big turning point for me was that one play where Post University came out with the Kitsune Rush. They had the attack visor. They got a couple of picks, but again, Trin Gamer was just waiting in the wings with that Death Blossom. And I think at that point, the old rotation was thrown off just a little bit, and it was certainly in favor of Long Island University. Snowy Dragon did a great job holding on uh, to their ultimate as well until the moment they needed. I thought for sure that they were going to use it when they got frozen by Vero, but they were able to stay through. Oh, you know, we're probably on a different map again. Nope, we are. We are actually on this one. Um, uh, but yeah, Snowy Dragon was able to hold on to that and use it then at a much more impactful time. So, big kudos uh, to Long Island University for turning that one around. We do now head to downtown Busan. So again, this is what uh, this is one of the places that you can play dive, but nobody's probably going to be doing it right now. Torero has opted this time for a Bastion, so they're looking for some big heavy guns right here. Um, that's going to be a uh, nice force out of uh, out of Kiriko. That means that Post University is going to be able to get onto this point, get it captured. Speaks tries to hold on, but ends up just staggering themselves there. So Post University is going to be real happy about that. Multikill this time is looking very, very good with their ult percentage. We're seeing kind of a wholesale swap of strategies, or maybe not strategies, but at least the front line coming out now from Long Island. They're going to the Junker Queen. That's going to provide a lot more uh, kind of sustained power in the fight, right? In the thick of it. There, looks like they're gonna go coast. Is Post University aware of this right now? Oh no, they're maybe considering uh, doubling back, but no, they uh, they decide to stay there. Yeah, Post University is aware. Multigale kind of leading the charge on this side of the equation. Trindgaver comes in pretty deep right there. They might be able to punish this Post University, that is. And in fact, they are able to. Uh, looks like Snowy is getting picked off onto the side as well. In the meantime, Stingray falls. So, Post University is going to get this fight when now it's just down to clean up. Kiriko tries to TP to safety, tries to save their compatriot back in the support line, but is unable to do so. Much better start here for Post University. I mean, Post did win, I believe, two to three fights in a row on that first map, but they won them so quickly they didn't really get a significant amount of percentage. But let's look now at what Long Island has in their tool bag, uh, or their toolbox, rather. 
Uh, Snowy is getting ready to have their Transcendence. Uh, Kiriko almost has their Kitsune Rush. Terrera has already used their tank form pretty early, but that also does pull out the um, pull out the wall from May. Maya is definitely on this Kiriko right here. Posey Versi has five ultimates right now, so this is fantastic for them. The big thing is they just don't want to overspend right here. Here comes the Kitsune Rush. They're going to try and push through that shield as quickly as they can. Snowy Dragon actually playing pretty aggressively right here. Here comes the ultimate now from Post University. The Transcendence is out here from Snowy, but a big blizzard from Vero going to turn things around for them. That's going to be four ultimates expended, but you know what? It's the last fight. That's going to even things up on Busan. We're going to map number three. Beautifully played there by Post University. I mean, they hardly even gave Long Island a shot to kind of build up any significant ultimates, especially considering that they had to kind of swap compositions a little bit halfway through that round. Now, this map, again, uh, this is one of the maps that I think is more flexible in terms of what kind of composition you're going to play. But again, we're expecting just kind of this rush brawl the whole night. Um... And I don't, uh, in fact, it doesn't even look like Post University is considering swapping any of this composition right here. They f feel like they found something at work. I, I mean, this was the same composition we saw on the first map, minus Torero on the Soldier. So maybe it's this extra damage that's really helping them out. It certainly burns through shields. Uh, it burns through uh, May walls. There's a lot of good stuff about having this Bastion um, working with you. This is interesting. Post University looks like they want to go kind of straight to the point. That's going to... Oh, no. They're actually taking the high ground here. Yielding a little bit of room here to Long Island. Junker Queen goes down right to the point. Kind of alone right here. Torero dives in. Probably pulled by a knife right there. Trend Gamer now joining the Junker Queen. Maywall has been used. Everybody now pushing up onto point. Discord Orb. Trying to find a target, trying to find some kind of value, but not really getting a whole lot. Stingray goes down, and with that, kind of the staying power is gone for Long Island University. So Post University going to be able to take first control, and I think that's something to talk about, right? The fact that Post University has gotten control of the point first every single time, right? Despite having gone down in that first map, one of the things that's been really consistent right now is Post University is winning that neutral fight, and that's a very, very important thing to do. Especially here when you're talking control point maps. This map, you put yourself at such a big advantage if you can win that first fight. We're going to have an engagement here, kind of on the high ground. Long Island says we need to make sure that we can kind of push uh, up here. They're using their turret form, not finding a whole lot of value. A lot of damage does go in, but big knife coming out there from Stingray. They go down low, but Terrera is forced to back off quite a bit. Stingray does bite off more than they can chew, though. The entire post-university squad says we're coming to your aid, Terrero. And, in fact, we're going to take advantage of maybe a little bit of overaggression coming out from the side of Long Island. That's going to push him up to about 60% by the time Long Island gets back. Now we're going to start to see these ultimates coming into play here. And, again, post-university is looking great. They've got five of them coming up. The DPS is going to be able to get theirs, but they're certainly going to have a few to contend with, too, from Long Island. Long Island's going to want to play this kind of slow. Um, but if... They lose this fight. They're going to want to try and lose it before about 80%. That's kind of the make or break point in terms of whether or not you get another fight. So, 10 seconds, this fight needs to be over unless Long Island feels like they can win it. Stingray's doing a great job of pulling out Terrera. And in fact, they're able to take him out that time. It's going to be a one-for-one -one trade. Here comes the Kitsune rush now from JoJo to try and keep things moving in Post University's direction. Blizzard does come... Uh, no, Blizzard does not come out. 83% on the board here. Several members of... LIU trying as best as they can to keep this point alive, but look at this. There's a sound barrier. Only one ultimate had to be expended by Post University in order to hold on to this. Here comes the ultimate ter from Terrero. Attack Visor coming in. Sound barrier is in. A couple of players here to try and turn things around for LIU. And this is a huge regroup, actually. Snowy is able to get that uh, transcendence out. Big purple coming in from Junker Queen's ultimate, but it's not going to be enough, I don't think, to turn it around. I say that, but then Stingray finds a couple. They're still alive, but for how long Post University does end up cleaning it up, and Post University going to take the first round. Or the first game, rather. Yeah, big plays coming out from Multicom. 
One of the big things that uh, I talked about last week, I think, with this uh, post-university squad that I think really um, is re really showing up uh, here today in a big way as well, is this team, I think, one of the biggest differences between the fall and the spring split is just how beautifully they are working together as a team, right? Their, uh, their synergy, the timing, right? When uh, Let's take, for example, that final Busan sub-map where uh, Torero got pulled in by Junker Queen's knife and Torero was able to back up and every single other member of Post University, all four of them pushed forward and they made... Uh, LIU pay for that. Several of the members were already down low because of kind of that spray that Torero had put in, and Torero is able to escape. All the rest of post pushes forward, takes care of Torero, and takes care of the other team. So I like seeing that kind of not only synchronized play, but adaptive play as well, right? They recognized the situation for what it was, and they were able to kind of capitalize on it. And what looked like it could have been very, very bad ended up being a positive. Love also seeing the fact that Post University was able to rally after that first map loss, because LIU looked phenomenal, right, on the back half of that first sub-map on Busan when we were on um, Mecha Base. So this is definitely not going to be, I think, an easy match for Post University. LIU has certainly shown that they're going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, and I don't think that, you know, that that uh, 3 loss last week that LIU suffered is any indication of any kind of weakness, right, coming into this week. So I'm looking forward to what this game is going to look like, how back and forth it's potentially going to be. Uh, so we're going to wait on this second map choice now, uh, see uh, where uh, I believe LIU is going to take us. Um, but again, I think kind of regardless of where they're going to take us, we're going to be seeing more of this rush, more of this brawl. Uh, you all know me if you've been following Post University. I love my dive, and so I'm a little disappointed that we're not going to likely see a lot of it. But with the kind of gameplay that we're seeing coming out of Post University, honestly, I can't be sad, right? Their brawl, their rush is looking phenomenal right now. Um, and I think we're just going to get more and more of that. We're going to be looking at a uh, hybrid map, if I'm not mistaken, coming up next. And, of course, the classic is King's Row. We saw Post University perform very well there last week, too. One of the uh, big standout players to me was Vero last week. Uh, she was on the Ash, and she took a lot of great positions, I think, and really kind of denied um, the, uh, the opposing team. Uh, Marquette, I believe it was, yeah, from being able to move in and take a lot of space, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, she made them work for it, shall we say, right? And so I wouldn't be surprised if we see um, if we see ourselves going back to King's Row because, of course, it's, it's the, the most popular map in the game, hands down. And, um, you know, every team is going to be scrimming it, right? And uh, every team is going to be knowing it. So one of the big changes I'm looking for, though, yeah, there we go, King's Row just came in. <laughs> one of the big changes I'm going to be looking, though, uh, from between this week and last week with Post University is I want to see them try to stabilize a little bit more on um, if they on defense, right? Because their attack was phenomenal. Their attack was flawless. I think they won every single fight when they were on attack on King's Row, but it was when they were on defense that they kind of struggled a little bit. They did eventually stop uh, the opposing team on third point, but the streets phase just went. The streets phase was just gone, right? They, they just did not hold um, that at all. And I think it was because of a little bit of greed, right? Maybe a little bit of, I, I wouldn't say overconfidence. I think I would just say greed, right? Maybe a little, um, they, they weren't quite as synced up as perhaps they needed to be. So that's definitely what I'm going to be looking for is if on defense they lose this first point, can they stabilize in the streets? And in particular, can they get an arches hold? Because I think that's that's the most defensible position in streets. Once you get to streets, typically we do see it fall very quickly. I mean, even at the pro level, that's the definitely the hardest point, the hardest position to kind of hold in or on this map. So my question is, can Post University do that if it comes down to streets? We've already loaded the game, so let's go ahead and take a peek at what we've got coming up for us. It is going to, once again, be uh, Post University in the red. So that means they're going to be attacking first time around. And Reinhardt, kind of the king of King's Row, coming out to play here. Stingray bringing them out. We've got uh, Big Fat Smelly. This is interesting. We're going to see the uh, Life Weaver the first time tonight. And Post University says, you know what, we're doing exactly the same thing. This is an interesting DPS line as well, coming out from... Uh, 
coming out from LIU. So I'm curious to see how Potatoes is going to be able to fare here. Big Maywall coming out. Torreira goes ahead and uses their turret for him. Guns down, Stingray. They just melt under the onslaught of bullets. Um, and there we can see Potatoes tried to do a little bit in the back lane. multi tical picks off more, bites off more than they can chew. So this certainly isn't over yet. Post University has started to move on to point now. Oops. Um, are they going to be able to hold on to a nice tracking there from Torero? I think we can see that uh, kind of that buff that we saw to just the bullet size and the projectile size really coming into play there. I mean, phenomenal tracking for sure, but I mean, you can see, I don't think any of those bullets missed in the air on that chunk rat that Trend Gamer had. So, kind of seeing that dominance again coming out from Post University in King's Row, right? That attacking ground was absolutely phenomenal. Ooh, that might be kind of big there. JoJo has already uh, used um, used their cleanse. So that could be an opportunity here for LIU to kind of push forward. And we can see Multigale is taking quite a bit of damage. Their shield's gone. They're going to have to back up here. They really don't have anything to kind of keep them in the fight right now. And Stingray has their uh, shield up of their own. Oh, Terrera coming in for the big ultimate. Where's it going to land? That's a big wall. It doesn't unfortunately catch anybody. Fat Smelly has to use uh, their pull to keep everybody out. That's a big tree coming out as well. So I think... Oh, but Terrera says, you know what? I don't care. They're going to take it out. Multikill finds Potatoes kind of flanking. Potatoes has been doing a good job, I think, of just kind of poking and giving a lot of trouble, being kind of a nuisance and a thorn in the side of Post University. But they haven't been able to secure those kills, and I think that's kind of the big difference maker. Snowy Dragon still sticking on to that Zen, and I, I really kind of like that move, by the way. I think that's a, I think that's a solid choice. Um, and it, while it hasn't really, I think, been a determining factor in a lot of these fights, it's definitely um, it, it's going to help enable Potatoes, who has now gone onto the Bastion. Looks like they kind of want to meet him tit for tat here with that, uh, with those big guns coming out. So we're gonna get the contest coming out here. Here comes the bevy of ultimates. We got the Rip Tower coming in from Trent. Is it going to be able to find anybody? Looking for Multi Cal, who's able to kind of sustain themselves through it. Their ultimate is gone. Stingrays, though, that is not the case. Tatos comes in with a couple of huge picks. Just melts Post University. And that is a big hold here for LIU. So this is exactly what they were hoping to see here. Now, it did cost them three ultimates, which I think is a pretty big deal versus uh, Post University, who just used that Blizzard, right? Once Vero didn't get the value that she was hoping for, it, they decided to kind of cut their losses, especially once uh, Potatoes came in and just mowed down everybody. I don't think Post University is quite ready for that damage. They've been used to playing up against that Tracer, who, while they do a lot of damage, it's kind of, um, shall we say, just... Uh, it's, it's targeted at one person, right? With Potatoes, still targeted at one person, but there's so much of it coming in. You can change uh, targets pretty quickly. That's going to be a big ultimate coming out from JoJo. Forces all of LIU back. Stingray tries to stabilize. Unable to do it. Here comes Trin to try and keep the point from being captured as long as they can. That was just kind of a stall tactic right there. Four and a half minutes on the clock, though, here for Post University, and they're continuing to get picks. Now, we dragon going down here is big. That's going to mean that this uh, this card could get all the way up to kind of this penultimate corner for Post University before, and, and actually now with Potatoes going down too, that's devastating for LIU. Post University kind of wants to keep up this pressure, and in fact, I think multi -Kel, if they wanted to, could push forward a little more aggressively, especially now that this card is right here. Potatoes has respawned there. They're going to be back into the mix, so they do need to be a little more careful now. All right, the fight's going to break out here in a big way. Terrera coming in with their ultimate. Dropping some rockets down on Potatoes. Tries to get something big. But it doesn't quite find what they want. Tree coming in again. Stingray's down, though. That is huge. Potatoes comes in with an ultimate of their own. But Sodium Level is there with the Sound Barrier to keep them alive through all this damage coming in. Terrera goes down. Vero now trying to slow things down. Big Fat Smelly on the Ice Weaver. Can uh, Vero find that last shot? They don't quite get it. Uh, they're going to have to use that ice block. No, they aren't. They're going to be able to hold on to it for this last fight right here, but they don't even get the touch. Love that kind of body block there coming out from Vero as well at the end. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Stingray would have been able to get around it or not, but it was certainly a great idea, and they may it, it may have caused them to just even walk to the side for a second, thus preventing them from touching. So 329, beautiful time bank there for Post University. 
love to see it for them. And LIU, there were a lot of good things that I saw. And one of the big things that I liked was their willingness to try out a few different things. I think when we saw Potatoes go over to the Bastion, they kind of turned things around. That was the fight. That was the first fight they, they won. Um, and that was the fight where they were able to kind of stop the bleeding and keep Post University from just going straight through streets, right? Which, again, is going to be one of those more... Uh, it, it, probably the easiest easiest section of King's Row. And again, uh, this right here is Arches. This is a spot that if you're on defense, I feel like you kind of want to try and snag if you can. Uh, Post University wanted to, won that first fight so effectively that LAU wasn't e really able to post up here. But instead, they got that hold right at the end of Streets, which is the other place that you want to try and get that. So... This is excellent. I love seeing this big wholesale swap in terms of what kind of strategy we're going to be seeing from both teams, really. multi -Kel back on the Arisa, and we've seen this uh, twice now from Post University on their defense. Seeing Ray coming out with the scientist with the monkey. Winston ready to go here. So Vero's probably going to be a pretty big target as his sodium level. Sodium is going to really need to make sure that they manage their... Um, uh, Manage their sleep darts well. Stingray gets pushed back pretty hard by Multikill. I like that awareness. Stingray did use their shield well, but they're taking a lot of damage. They're forced to back up entirely to choke. That's going to be a nice uh, spear there. Stingray forced to use their shield early, which means, honestly, they're going to have a hard time engaging right here. Stingray needs to try and push onto this high ground. Look at how much control there is here. Here we go. This is beautiful. That's exactly what you want to see. Nice sleep dart there from... Uh, sodium level followed immediately by the nade. Torero does go down, though, so things are going to be slowed down a little bit. Multikel does find Trin, though, so it's going to be one for one. But to Potatoes gets Vero with uh, the hack and with the virus. Multikel now trying to back up, keep things in play. What? <laughs> Multikel already has their ultimate. That's huge. They're putting a lot of damage now into Stingray. Another big anti coming out. That means that this coalescence from... Uh, Moira's not going to really do as lot, much as they hope, but Jero comes back. They're able to take down one. Multicon in the meantime does go down, but a lot of time burnt off this first clock. That's going to end up, I think, probably being about a minute and a half off. Um, we do get the nano boost committed to Torero. I think they're going to try and touch, but somebody has to get onto the point. They're not going to be able to. Stingray holds ground, sacrifices their life, but in the meantime gets the point. That was a huge play there from LIU. Not only do they get the point, but they get the nano boost out of Sodium. I mean, it was a great idea. I think that hero play certainly could have worked, but um, that isn't how the cards fell this time for Post University. Multical actually now onto the Junker Queen. This uh, could be pretty problematic now for Stingray, right? If uh, Multi can land a nice knife onto uh, Stingray, that could be just game over, especially if the bubble's already been used. That was a nice bubble right there. That isolated multi -cal for just a second. They weren't able to get heals, which was just enough for this dive composition to be able to kind of delete them. But Torero turns it around with an ult, then a few extra bullets right there at the end. Um... Huge play coming out, and this is actually a beautiful hold coming out here for Post University. As long as Multikel can kind of get back into the fight before um, before LIU is able to kind of regroup, they can take this Arches hold. I don't think they're actually going to be able to do it, though, because that is a long way from third. Uh, Multikel is still waiting to kind of get back from the fight here. So check in on LIU and see. Yeah, they're almost ready to go here. And, yeah, we are just now have... Chucker Queen getting back, so they don't quite get that Arches hold. Here comes the Primal Rage. They jump right, though, into a Sleep Dart and a big turreted Torero. So they just get melted. Hack comes in on Devero, is forced to back up, throws in the Bob to try and stabilize and see if they can uh, just kind of keep this cart under their control. Multikel does eat a Sleep Dart. Snowy has gone, uh, Snowy Dragoon has gone onto the Ana too to kind of match that. Torero is so far though the hero today on King's Row. Big plays coming out from the DPS from the Bastion player right now. Three minutes on the clock, so certainly F uh, LIU has plenty of time to try and make something happen. They got a couple of nice ultimates coming out. Uh, look for, I think, like Trend Gamer to maybe see if they can use this uh, like Nano Visor in a pretty aggressive way. I like this flank that we're seeing coming out as well, right? They uh, this this team is aware that if they just kind of try and push through the choke, they're gonna have a hard time 
getting to the point where they can kind of engage. We got Potatoes on the flank as well. Terrera seems to be aware of it. Yeah, in fact, uh, Sodium level tries to get something going, but Terrera pops that uh, turret form a little early. They use their ultimate to kind of get out of it, and I love that idea, but Trin coming in big with the Nano Visor. Catches a couple. Uh, Post University, though, able to get uh, almost even things out, but it's not going to be quite enough. And LIU does regain control of the card. Going to be able to push it forward. We're likely going to see one more fight happening right here at the end of Streets. Oh, no, but with that late pick on Devero, that could be devastating for Post University. This is going to be kind of a scuffed fight here. Post might even elect to just let this point be. We got Vero swapping over now to, uh, to the May. Yeah, we can see multi kill considering whether or not they're going to try and push forward. They're taking a lot of damage, trying to get the point. They're forced to use their uh, abilities just to try and touch point, and there's just too much damage coming in, not enough support. They really did need the May right there, so now it's going to be up to Post University to try and kind of regroup here, get back under control. Um, but at this point, look for Stingray to kind of take control of this high ground here to the right uh, for their team. We've still got Potatoes kind of on that flank, just causing a lot of problems, which you'd love to see. Um, a big sleep coming out as well. Potato's not quite able to uh, get in there and make anything of it. They didn't quite have the support. Multi-kill's back now. Back onto the ramp. Potato's looking for a pulse bomb right here. They throw it in. That might catch Terrero a little bit, but not a whole lot of damage is done. Big Fat Smelly going to have this Coalescence ready to go, too. This could be big um, in conjunction with the Tag Visor, but there's not going to be one. Beautiful wall from Vero coming in to save the day. JoJo going to be able to hold on, I think, to this Kitsune rush as well. Typically in Ultimate, you kind of want to use at the beginning of a fight. So, yeah, we're just seeing a big pushback here from Post University, just forcing everyone back. Potatoes going down is big, too. That's a lot of time. I mean, even if LIU is able to complete this map, they're going to be looking at about a two-minute deficit in the time bank. Best case scenario, I think, at this point. More likely, probably going to be about a minute. Three big Ultimates coming up for Post University. That nano boost, uh, I, I think we're going to probably see the Kitsune Rush coming out, seeing if maybe they can win a fight with just that. But if the Coalescence comes out, I wouldn't be surprised if we see something big coming too. Vera with the, um, with the Blizzard, I think, might be one of their best options if we do see that Coalescence come out. Of course, Big Fat Smelly is going to be able to get out of it. Here comes that Coalescence right away. Sleep Dark goes out. Not going to be able to find anything from it. Here comes the Blizzard now from Vero. It's going to be a trade. So the support for DPS. Terrera coming in with their ultimate as well. Love to see it in conjunction with the Blizzard. Finds a few. There's uh, blood been spilled on either side. But look at this. LIU has kind of turned things around just a little bit. But multi kill with the clutch ultimate there. Right at the end of that fight to swing what looked like it could have been all in favor of LIU back to Post University. Post had to spend three ultimates to LIU's two. But big thing is LIU has this tack, uh, has this, has this nano visor ready to go. Tracer jumping in pretty aggressively. Multigale looking to try and slow down their escape but doesn't quite find that. Big Smelly on the flank as well. Multigale forced to use their block to kind of get back out. Dive coming in now from Stingray. Big Fat Smelly bounce Vero. That's pretty big. There's the mana boost onto Terrero, though. So much damage coming in. Able to just gun down several, but several drop on the side of Post as well. Terrero again looking like the difference maker here. Huge picks. That might have been a 5K. That was at least a 4K for Terrero. 20 seconds left to go. Post University primed to hold on here, but they don't have any ultimates. None in the bank, though, either for LIU. They're going to be able to get another touch with Stingray, but they might pay for it with their life. Potatoes goes over to the Sombra once again. In fact, no, it looks like they're going to be able to get the touch right there. Big sleep onto Trin. Huge anti coming out from Sodium, who was throwing big antis on King's Row last time. Ultimate out from Terrero. They sacrificed their life. Two players left on point here from LIU. How long are they going to last? Snowy Dragon. Dragoon just jumping around on point, making it hard to finish things off. But another beautifully placed anti nade. We're going to have another quick touch here at the end, coming out for Potatoes, but it's only going to last for so long. They're able to take them out. Stingray and Trend Gamer trying to get something going, but nobody here is falling from Post University. And this is just a trickle in to try and keep over time alive. Stingray does a great job of stalling it out, but it's not going to be quite enough. And Post University takes another map, putting them on match point tonight. And yeah, no surprise here. 
play of the game coming out from Torero. Look at that, the Nano Visor, but with that uh, onto, uh, who was that, onto Trin. But it didn't matter because that anti nade came out. And, you know, like, honestly, actually, as much as I'm singing Torero's praises right there, Sodium has just done beautifully every time they are on the Ana. And I think the, the, the grasp that Sodium has of Ana on King's Row is fantastic. They are constantly hitting very impactful nades. Got a few really nice sleeps in there as well, but it's it's been the nades. It has been the anti-nades, I think, that have really been the difference maker here uh, tonight. So, 2-0, the scoreline right now for Post University. Got to see if they can get another clean sweep here tonight. Improve their record here in ECAC to 2-0. They had to buy the first week. Actually, that might make them 3-0. I'm not sure. I'll have to go and look at that. Um, but regardless, they are looking fantastic. Um, I'm going to see... Let's see here. I'm going to check and see uh, if they're going to throw it to break or not. Or uh, rather, if, they, if the players want. Okay, yeah. We're going to take uh, five minutes here. So don't go anywhere. We will be back very soon with map number three.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the game. Welcome back to the match. Welcome back to the stream. Warren Jungle Guide Hammond here, bringing you the post university action for Overwatch 2 here at the ECAC. We are at map number three. Post University looking to put this away again in just a three. LIU hoping to stave off their second defeat of the season. Looking to see if they could get their first map win as well. And they want to try and make it happen on Route 66. That's where they're hoping maybe they can find a little bit of an advantage. Uh, they could potentially play a bit more of a dive composition here, especially on defense. And in fact, it looks like that's what we're going to see here as we go ahead and load into the game. Seeing Ray going this time for the D.Va, and this could be a pretty impactful change because if at any point Sodium decides they want to go to that Ana, well, that defense matrix is there to keep their team safe. If they're going to be on it and really kind of cognizant of how to balance the, you know, the uh, aggression versus the defense, keeping their team safe, then this could be pretty problematic. Multical uh, and the rest of the post university squad we're seeing pretty much more of the same except this time Torero going for that Reaper and I like this adaptation because it means Torero is going to be able to kind of get into the back line when they want to right they could teleport up onto that high ground so my eyes are certainly going to be on the terror that has been Torero uh, this match in fact we're going to start out there and kind of see what they have ready for it. Stingray holding on to this high ground here, which I really like. Sodium trying to boop him off as well. Love to see that kind of utility coming out from your support line. And again, we're kind of seeing Torreira kind of biding their time right now, just throwing a little, a little bit of damage. Potato's on a pretty big flank here. This could be a mistake as Torreira punishes them for it. It was close, but they do get that opening pick. Um, Stingray wasn't able to kind of get there in time to really save their compatriot. And now we see kind of a big uh, retreat coming out from the team in blue from LIU. Still waiting to get that uh, teammate back, but I like this kind of flank coming out here from Snowy Dragon. Vero does find Stingray, but in the meantime, Snowy Dragon kind of poking at things from the back line, but they're down to about 100 HP. I don't think they're going to be able to get out safely as Vero does eventually, eventually find them. Didn't see enough kind of stabilization coming out, I think, from LIU here, and Post University really kind of able to take advantage of that. And now... LIU kind of has three, oh, making four players now, kind of up in this high ground. Torreira going in pretty aggressively with the help of Sodium, who's able to help them get out. Potatoes gets booped back in by Sodium. Love that play, too. Really seeing some nice gameplay out of Sodium as well tonight, whether they are on, uh, on the Lucio or the Ana. They're making plays. They're making things happen. A couple of big impactful ultimates, though, coming up here from LIU. Look at this play coming out from Sodium. They're going to try it. Oh, big boop incoming right here. Pushes um, the support line down. Trink Gamer able to get back up to that high ground, but really disrupted what they were trying to do. And so now this card is a great position here for Post University, but the high ground really being controlled well by LIU as well. Post University needs to do something about that. Vero trying to, but she's forced down to the low ground as well. We're sitting on five ultimates. Here come a couple of them. Potato's able to get JoJo out of the mix, which is going to be big. Now it's just those heals coming out from Sodium. They do have the sound barrier, so things are looking a little bit rough. They can't try and turn it around. Snowy Dragon goes down. Stingray has been demacked. Here comes a big tack visor out from Potatoes. The sound barrier there to help keep the team stabilized. Finds Potatoes in the back line. Nice play coming out from the support line. Stingray demac once again. Post University going to be able to take them out, send them back to spawn. And what a beautiful fight from both sides, honestly. That went back and forth several times, and I like what I saw each team doing there. Post University likely going to be able to capture this here. Uh, as Team Grey, I don't think it's going to be able to quite make it back to the fight in an impactful way. And yeah, we're going to see them go ahead and yield that point. So now watch for Terrera to go on the flank here with this uh, Death Blossom. Post University probably not going to want to try and spend both uh, DPS ultimates. Potatoes seeing if they can take that high ground there. Multical certainly going to need to be aware of that. Skill Orb coming in from Big Fat Smelly does a little bit of damage. Torreira actually taking a lot of damage. Yeah, Potatoes takes them out. Big plays coming out from the uh, 
a soldier on the high ground here. And honestly, the positioning coming out from LIU has been fantastic. And yeah, look at that. They clocked sodium level, trying to get another boop on him. Sodium says, all right, all right, I see you. Message received. I'm heading back to my team. Bear throws up a wall to try and give their team a little bit more of an opportunity. Potatoes knows that there's a, yeah, there's a death blossom behind him. Terrero, big plays. Going to clear the way. Gets one DPS, one support out. DMX, uh, the tank. Huge hero plays coming out from Terrero. And now we're looking at four ultimates as we come into the last fight here for Post University. Stingray making the last moment swap here to something that's going to have a little bit more staying power on point. Stingray looking to see if they can just go toe-to-toe -to -toe right now with multi cal but multi is going to have their ultimate big blizzard coming out. Stingray is going to be caught into it. Nice uh, ultimate coming out for Big Fat Smelly, but the card's still moving. multi -Cal gets their ultimate out of the way, and uh, JoJo throws in the Kitsune Rush for good measure. 341 on the clock. Made it even faster through Route 66 than they did King's Row. So, Post University has to be feeling great about their chances right now. And this is going to be LIU with their back up against the wall. They need to really see if they can match this time because Post University, they, you know, the, the score line, the 2 0 score line really belies, I think, just how close this game has been at times, right? Uh, one map difference on. Uh, Busan, we saw it got the third point. <coughs> we got a full cap on King's Row. Third point for LIU on King's Row. So it all comes down to this. How is LIU going to be able to respond? What's going to be the answer? We, we're seeing a few different things come out this time, and I'm curious to see how this is going to play out uh, for both squads. Gonna have Snowy Dragoon on the Echo. I like this, especially with the pocket and toe uh, from Trin. <clears throat> Look at this. Post University is looking for a pretty aggressive play, I think, right here. Watch Rivero to um, uh, to try and put a wall up if somebody looks to, you know, if, if one of the members of LIU decides they want to try and push into there. In addition, they may be able to just kind of isolate one player if they push forward a little too far. Oh, but Potatoes is going to be able to scout this out on the Sombra. Uh, LIU has to know that shenanigans are afoot because they haven't been able to find anybody yet. And yeah, watch for the wall to come out right now. Here we go. Yeah, there's the wall. Looking to see if they can isolate somebody. Stingray comes back pretty quickly. Terrera takes out Snowy Dragoon, though. We've got a hack in the backlight. Potatoes trying to make something happen. Um, they do get the res onto Snowy Dragoon. Is that going to be enough to kind of save the day, though, for LA unit? Looks like not this time around. So that kind of trick play really played off there for Post University. <clears throat> and Terrera, once again, really looking at a lot of ultimate charge. They're halfway to their first ult. Multikill takes out Potatoes, too, who just stayed a little too long in the back line. You can't do that so well anymore as uh, Sombra with that nerf that came in a while ago to the translocator. It's been up a little bit more than they could chew right there, but again, I do like these adjustments that we're seeing. Potatoes, once again, kind of scouting that high ground. Nice job from Sodium, though, to kind of push them back. And Sodium, as well, has actually now got uh, even, uh, come even with Terrera in terms of all percent. And Chat comes out on the Sodium, forced to back off here. High ground now being uh, very well controlled here by LIU. So Post University kind of respecting that, falling back. Sodium gets hacked again. And uh, Sodium seems to be the big target here, but Terrero in the meantime does find Stingray. As we've got this Lucio, um, the Lucio Sombra duel going. Goes away the Lucio this time around. Stingray's gonna go ahead and swap. They say, you know what, let's try Sig. Because Sig is almost never bad. Sig is almost always a good choice. Not a good choice, at least a reasonable choice. And if not either of those, usually an excellent choice. So this is this is a good adjustment, I think. Especially because, oh, big rock coming out onto Multicale. Doesn't quite get the kill, and that could be devastating. But they're trying to chase down Terrera right now. But here comes a big ultimate out from Multicale that's going to help save their compatriot. They're able to hunt down a couple other players. Stingray finds Vero, though. So that's going to be... This fight is going to be won here by Post University. However... They're going to definitely need to make sure that they play this right and they don't get too aggressive here because that is a long walk back 
for Vero. Right? Look at look at where Vero is. This is gonna be. Uh, it, they're gonna be getting to this fight late. So Post University needs to make sure that they back up appropriately. That they give enough space. Oh, actually, look at that. May actually got back in. Never mind. I called that completely wrong. They booked it. They booked it, and maybe uh, LIU just took a little bit too much time trying to regroup here. Four ultimates on the board. Vera throws in the blizzard, and that's going to catch Stingray in it. A lot of damage coming in, but kudos to Big Fat Smelling for using that Coalescent to try and keep their team alive. Potatoes wasn't quite lucky enough, didn't survive that. And right now, we're at 52 seconds. We are in under a minute, and LIU just has not been able to break through this stranglehold that Post University has put on first point here on Route 66. So the swaps are continuing to come out. Snowy Dragoon going for the Cassidy. Now we've got Potatoes on the uh, Tracer that we've seen before. Can this help them break through? Because now they just need to take this one fight at a time, and it's going to be last fight here for them right now. Torero finds one. Torero finds two to start things off. This has gone from bad to worse here for LIU. Stingray needs to find some way to kind of use this uh, big ultimate. They're going to be able to catch four, three, but a huge sound barrier comes out. The Kitsune runs from JoJo. Nice rock coming out from Stingray, but is it going to be enough? The shield is there to try and keep everybody at bay, but multi -Kel says, nah, I got my ultimate ready to go. And that with the Kitsune Rush is going to be huge, absolutely devastating. Overtime is here, and Post-University makes it another 3-0 to improve their record to 2-0 on the season. What phenomenal gameplay coming out tonight from the Eagles. Let's take a peek at what multi Kel was able to pull off here. Yeah, this looks to be that last fight where they just secured this victory in style. And what a way to close out the stream with just a beautiful game on King's Row. Or, sorry, not on King's Row, on Route 66. Uh, love to get to see that map. It's not the one that we get to see uh, too terribly often. So happy to see that it got a little bit of airtime today. Uh, great play from both squads. Best of luck to Long Island University uh, in the rest of your season. And Post University has to be feeling fantastic. Has to be feeling phenomenal right now. Sitting at 2-0. Great way to start off the spring split here at the ECAC. Big thanks once again to everybody at Post University, to the team, to the squad, to Denny over there, their manager, their coach. Uh, once again, my name is Warren Juggle God Hammond. Be sure to follow Post University everywhere. And I'm going to be back tomorrow night casting for Post University. It's going to be Valorant this time around for me. So be sure to tune back in there. Um, check out both of the streams on Twitch. That's going to do it for us here tonight. GG's and see you next time.